Hey guys, it's time for July's Mental Health Monday. This month's Mental Health Monday is sponsored by Nomad Internet. Check them out and use discount code CrystalVanner25. Please be reminded that this channel does not produce content for children. Please remember, Mental Health Monday is peer support only. I don't have a degree in mental health, mental anything. Yeah, I'm just sharing my struggles with you in the hopes that you'll know you're not alone. So for this uh, month's Mental Health Monday, it's going to be fairly short because I don't think I need to touch on this subject too terribly long. And I think I have maybe done a video on it before. I'm not sure. I didn't go through all the previous months to see. But because it's something that I've been struggling with this past maybe mm, two months, I wanted to touch on it. I wanted to touch on the invisible mental health illnesses and physical illnesses. So I'm in a little bit of a breezy place, so I'm hoping you don't get too much background noise. I also have my fans going, so I'm going to try and project my voice so that you can hear me over top of all of that. So I just want to know, want you guys to know that I've been struggling big time with my anxiety over the last two months. Now, I feel like a lot of people who watch me on YouTube, maybe see a post on Instagram, I feel like they kind of don't believe that I struggle with stuff, that I'm just making stuff up just for the sake of making it up. I don't understand who would do that. I'm sure there are people who would. But I ain't the one. I don't have time for that. <laughs> I have so much going on in life that I don't have time for that. And it doesn't help me. I'm not making any money by doing that. I'm not gaining anything by doing that, so it's kind of purposeless to make it up. I feel like a big struggle of my anxiety for me the last maybe month and a half to two months um, has been frustrating because even the people closest to me don't get it. And I kind of feel like um, because they don't really have any kind of diagnosed um, mental illness or mental health issue, they just, they're either, they either really seriously don't get it or they're really just being, you know, oblivious to the fact that I'm telling you that I'm struggling with this and that it's really real. So much to the point that I wasn't eating for a few days. My stomach was literally in knots um, from the anxiety. And just because there's a smile on this face, just because I'm upbeat on the live videos and, and on the videos, it does not mean that my struggle is over or I have less of a struggle. Um, a lot of times the person that's your quote unquote strongest friend is usually the one that's suffering the most. And I think a lot of people misinterpret the outer projection as um, everything being okay. And we don't get checked on. We don't get looked in on. We don't get looked after because well, she's good. I just saw her the other day smiling, laughing, doing whatever. And I think I've kind of gotten to the point where I'm like lashing out a little bit at people. Because I feel like you don't check on me. You don't ask me if I'm doing okay. You don't worry about me. And because of that, I'm, I'm being really short with people. And I know it. I, I know when I'm doing it. I sense it. And sometimes I don't care. I just don't. I just don't care that I'm doing it. And I don't apologize for it because it's like, I don't care. Um, so I hurt your little feelings. I don't care. <laughs> um, is it right? 
Probably not. Um, but I also don't believe it's 100% wrong either. Because in a way, I'm protecting myself by putting up a wall and a barrier and a attitude. Because otherwise, I'm going to just crack. And it's like self-preservation in a way. Is it the most um, <laughs> healthy? No, <laughs> it's a little bit toxic. I understand that. I get it. Um, but when I do bring it to someone's attention who's close to me that I am struggling with this and they kind of brush it off, it almost makes it even worse. It almost makes my defense mechanism even worse because it's like, I just freaking told you I was having a hard time and you just literally act like you didn't hear me. So then it's like, oh, okay, bet. <laughs> the way my patty rolls it rolls deep <laughs> but um so I'm kind of I'm in a group but I'm also separating myself in order to deal with myself you know what I'm saying and I'm also having a lot of pain. That's the other thing I want to talk about is those invisible pain illnesses or ailments that a lot of people think you don't have because, you know, you don't look like you're in pain. You don't look like you have some kind of a condition. Um, and that really pisses me off when people assume. There are a lot of people with debilitating nerve and muscular and joint and other issues that don't look like a disability and I always try and remind people that I'm in pain every single day when you've been in pain every day for years okay years you learn to live with it it becomes a companion in your everyday life so you're not gonna look like you're in pain because you've grown accustomed to being in that pain. Now, are there going to be times where the pain is so incredibly bad that maybe you just don't do as much as normal? Of course. Are there going to be days when the pain is completely um, better or way less than normal and you can do a little extra on those days? Of course. But to look like you have a physical disability in order for people to understand when you say no to something or you don't feel like doing something or you just want to be alone or lay around or whatever excuse it is that you're giving them or whatever reasoning you're giving them for them to then be and have an attitude about that is frustrating as well so to tell people, you know, I'm in pain every day. It's just the level of pain. Um, there's never a day that I'm not in pain. And I legit only sleep about five to six hours. That's it. That's all my body allows. On good days. To me, that's like eight to nine hours, honestly. So if I can get that straight five to six, I'm good. Most days I am awake before five o'clock. Am I up and moving? Not at all. But I am awake. Uh, I'm doing work on the phone or the tablet or computer maybe. Or I'm just laying there um, dealing with the thoughts in my mind. I'm going over what I would like to get done that day. Or I'm just laying there in pain, stretching out muscles, rubbing an aching spot or what have you. So... For people to not see that you're struggling mentally and physically and for those closest to you to not have that empathy or acknowledge or care for you because they don't deem your condition worthy enough to warrant that extra amount of attention or checking on, 
Um, you know, I feel like it, like, it, like if I had a cane or a walker or a wheelchair, you know, people would be more concerned. Um, if I was um, on some kind of medication or in and out of doctors or, um, you know, something, I feel like there would be more concern from those closest to me. And the reason I say it closest to me is I'm not expecting this from people who don't actually know me. I'm not expecting this kind of care from people who I don't talk to on a regular basis and explain to them what's going on with me. I'm not expecting that from them. So if you're like me and you have people in your life who just don't believe you, who think you're a hypochondriac, because that was a big deal for me growing up. Oh, you're just a hypochondriac. You're faking it. Um, I've lived in this constant uh, pain since puberty. And it got to the point where I just stopped saying anything about it. Because I was always labeled as faking or hypochondriac. So, I've just learned to suffer in silence. So if you are one of these sufferers in silence, I want you to know you're not alone. I want you to know that we can be our own best friend or worst enemy when we do that. And honestly, sometimes we have to continue to voice as loud as possible to those who we call family and friends what's going on with us. And honestly, if they don't get it, and if they really aren't trying to be there in a way we need them to be there, it might be time for their season to be done. What's the saying? A lot of people are in your life for a reason or a season. Maybe their season and reason is done. Not saying you got to start cutting people out of your life. <laughs> Give them a chance. Give them a chance, even if you have to write it out. Because I know sometimes for me, it's hard to voice my opinion in a back and forth conversation over the phone or in person. Because a lot of times the person is already thinking about what they're going to say to rebut what I'm saying. So writing it down in a letter, maybe having them read it when you're not around is better. Um, writing for yourself in a journal, documenting your mental illness, your pain in a journal, and maybe letting them read that so they can see, look, this is the course of, a, of the last few weeks or a month. I want you to see what I've been going through. Um, I want you to see this is not just something I say to say. But however it's going to work for you, um, get into therapy if you need to. I'm, I'm really considering how I can get back into some kind of therapy um, at least a couple times a month is just a check-in, just to have someone that I can get this out um, and that's really why I do these Mental Health Mondays, because this is like my way of getting all of this out, just spilling it out without being interrupted, spilling it all out so someone hears me. And that's really the main reason why I do this. I do it to support you and to be a peer support, but I really do it to support myself. Know that you're not alone. Know that I love you and I understand your struggles. Go in the comments and let's talk about it. Please remember to be good to yourself, be kind to others, and whatever it is you're doing, I hope you are enjoying it.